Hey, I'm Lee Halliday, and I've partnered with Google and the Google Maps team to create a Google Maps and React crash course, where we're going to be going from basically nothing all the way into a really cool experience with Google Places, directions, marker clustering, and here's what we're going to be building. So we'll start off with basically an empty map and a Google Places search box where you can search for your office. So let's say that we work at the Google Kitchener office. It's going to place a beach flag marker on the map and it will draw some concentric circles around the office. Sort of green is easy to commute to, yellow you could but it's starting to get far away and red is pretty far at this point. At the same time, we, we show some markers and we cluster them together and that allows us to click into one and choose one of the houses we may buy. And as soon as we choose a house, it draws directions from our potential house to our office. And on the left, it shows us this is 57 kilometers away and it will take 45 minutes to commute each way. But if you were to do that over the course of a full year, the average American works 260 days a year. So if you were to multiply that out, that's actually 16 days you'd spend in your car and it would cost you over $4,000. So this is what we're going to be building over the next hour. The first thing we have to do to even get started with showing a map on the screen is load the Google Maps script. So we're going to do that right in the home component that's being rendered inside of Next.js, inside of the pages index file. And we're going to use the use load script hook that comes with React Google Maps API, the package that we're using to display the map. So what we're going to do is we're going to say const and it gives us something back uh, boolean called is loaded. And that will let us know when the map is actually ready to display. So for this, we can call the use load script function. And to that, we need to pass two things. The first thing is the actual Google Maps API key. So for this, we're going to have to hop over into our browser. And if we go to the Google Cloud platform where you can manage all of your credentials and things like that, you can click Create Credentials API Key. And this will generate you a new API key that you can copy. Keep in mind that you should go and restrict it to whatever domain that you're hosting this um, website on. Otherwise, anyone who found the key could go and um, use your API key. So we don't want that. So we'll come back here and if we paste this in, yes, it will work, but you shouldn't do that. You should try to avoid committing any sort of key, um, anything that's potentially confidential into your actual code because if you're putting this on GitHub, that would expose the key pretty easily to anyone who's looking. So instead what you would do is you would take this key and you would go into, at least locally in Next.js, the .env.local file. So I already have another API key. I'll just copy it over, it doesn't really matter here. And keep in mind, you should have next underscore public underscore prefixing the name of this key. Otherwise, Next.js won't expose it into the, the client-side JavaScript that it's, that it's creating. So we can come here and we can replace this with process.env and then the name of our API key. The next thing we want to do is uh, tell it which libraries we're, we're hoping to use with this Google Maps script that we're loading. So for that, we'll say libraries and we're just going to pass in one extra, places. So places we don't need to actually show the map but we are going to be working with Google Places to find um, our office. And uh, so we might as well tell the script that we need this now. So the last thing I want to show is that once we've set up our key and all of that, you need to make sure that you've enabled the APIs that we're going to be using in this tutorial. So the four that we're working with, um, first of all, it's the Maps JavaScript API. That's just to use the map itself. We need Places API for the Google Places search. Geocoding, because once we get sort of the address from here, we're going to use the geocoding API to convert that string into latitude and longitude. And lastly, Directions API, because we're going to be asking for directions between two sets of coordinates. So these are the four APIs that you need to enable. So coming back here, you can see the only thing we're showing right now is just the word map. So we're going to be working on that in a second, but first we're gonna check, has this script finished loading? So we're gonna say, if not is loaded, so it's not done loading yet, here you can show whatever loading screen you want. 
we're going to keep things simple for this tutorial and just say loading dot dot dot. Um, and it will show that for a split second. So if we load this, it's so fast you can almost not even see it. And when it's done loading, we'll just return out uh, a div that says map. So that's the first part. We've loaded the actual script. Now let's move on to rendering out the first version of our map. So I'm rendering out a div that just says the word map. Obviously we can't stick with that. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to render out this map component that I'm importing from components map. So we're going to go and put the actual logic of our map here. And we're doing this just so that as we're building this, this app, we don't end up with just one massive file with a bunch of different components in it. We're just splitting up our code into smaller pieces. So if we open this map file, there are there is some code here already. Let me quickly explain what's going on. I've set up the imports that we're going to be using just to save some time as we're going through the tutorial. It's more about, I want to show like how to use these imports. And then as we use each one, we'll talk about where they come from. We're also working in TypeScript. So I've pre-set up some sort of shortcuts. So whenever I want to use the lat long literal, I don't have to type out google.maps.latlongliteral. The actual component that we're working with itself actually just renders out a div that says map for now. So here's where we'll be working. And I've set up some options below for displaying some circles that we'll be showing that shows us sort of like an easily commutable distance, potentially commutable, very difficult to commute from. It sort of goes in concentric circles out, um, adding more distance each one. So lastly, I've got a little function to generate some houses to display on the map. Um, we'll go over this when we get to the part of showing these houses. It's just uh, basically randomizing some houses to display on this map. So back to actually rendering out the map. What we're going to do is we're going to start with just setting up this div here with a class of a container. So class name container. What does this container do? It's in here in my global CSS. It just sets up um, flex height of the whole screen, the 100 VH. So within the container, we're going to put two other divs. The first div is for the controls. So we'll give it a class name of controls. And this is where we're going to put our Google Places search. For now, we can just put an H1 that says commute, question mark. So if we were to come here now, we're starting to see this take shape. We got the controls over here on the left. The map is going to show up over here on the right. So we can go create another div here and we'll give it a class name of map. And if we look at the CSS from that, um, the map, the controls is just 20% width, some colors. The map is 80% width and sort of forcing it this 100 VH. So we can come back here and inside of this div is where we're going to use the first component to display the map, this Google map component right here. So we'll put this in and we need to give this a few props for it to even work. Uh, if you just look right now, nothing's showing up. So that's a tip to us. We need to do something to make it work. A couple things we need to give it. First, what level of zoom will this be sort of defaulted to when the, the user loads the map for the first time on the page? Next is where should the map be centered on? And yes, we could come here and just hard code the latitude and longitude that we're going to be using for the center, but that can cause some issues where every time this re-renders, it thinks this is actually a new set of coordinates. So if we put in uh, lat 43 LNG of 80, uh, minus 80 actually, this would render out fine the first time, but sort of every time it re-renders this map component, uh, Google map component's gonna think, oh, you want me to recenter this map at this new location? Sure, I can do that. And it will sort of plop it back to the center, even if the, your user has dragged it around. So to get around that, we need to basically use the same instance of the object every time. So we'll take this, and one way you can do that is by putting it out here, sort of outside of the component itself, center, 
that would work. Another way you can do it, and the way we'll do for this tutorial is to put it inside of here, but to use the use memo hook. So basically this tells React, go and generate the value once, and then reuse that value unless one of these dependencies change, this second argument here. But because we're not passing any dependencies, it'll never change, so you'll always get the exact same reference to this object right here that was returned from the arrow function. So is the map showing up? Not yet, but we're almost there. So the last thing we need to do is basically just set the map container, this sort of what space should this map be rendered into? And for that, we can give it a class name. So map container class name, and we'll give it one called map container. And map container is just 100% width of this 80% width div and 100 VH. So if we come back here, you can see we have the map rendering for the first time. We can drag it around, we can do whatever we want. Um, and last thing we're going to do is basically just tweak a few options of this map. Um, in this case, you can switch to, to satellite or to map. You can switch to street view. If I want just like a more simplified view of the map, I can set up some options to have it not render these out. So for that, I'm gonna follow the same sort of approach here where I set up options with use memo like that. Uh, no dependencies, just an empty array. And the options that I'm going to be working with are to disable the default UI, true, and clickable icons, false. So just different icons that may show up on the map as you zoom in, like uh, dragons, golf clubs and parks and stuff like that. We don't want the user to be able to click these in our case, so we can just disable them by passing this in. So once I have the option set up, I can come back down to the map and I can set the options to be options. Cool, so you can see it removed these um, default controls. I, I got out the, the zoom here and the street view. So you can zoom in just by double clicking or using your, your mouse, or if you're on a mobile app, you could sort of um, use your fingers to, to zoom in and out. The last thing I wanna do before we move on to some custom styling of the map using a map ID, which is a really cool feature of Google to control all of the styles of your map inside of the Google console and just set an ID on the map here for it to look the exact way you want. We're going to set up this map and put it inside of a ref for us to access later when we're going to be controlling some zoom in and out automatically. So I'm gonna set up a, ra uh, a map ref here. So we'll call it map ref and we'll call this use ref just like this. And because I'm working with TypeScript, what I want to do is give it um, a type, a type hint here in these angly brackets. And we can tell it that it's going to be an instance of Google map just like that. And I realized that I actually forgot to set up a few type hints here. So what will the center be? It's going to be a lat long literal. And what will the options be? They will be these map options here. So this one and this one. Lat long literal is literally just an object, a literal object that has the latitude and the longitude. Okay, so how do we actually populate the value of this map ref? Well, Google map component gives us an onload function. And so when it's finished loading, it will call this function and it will give us the, the ref to this map. So what we can do is we can set up here and we're going to set up something called um, a callback, basically a function that we don't wanna run um, immediately as we define it, but we don't want it to generate a new version of this callback function every time the component renders. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna define onload here and we'll say use callback. So it's very similar to use memo, but it's specifically for when you want to um, optimize re-rendering with a, a function that's going to be called. So what we're going to do is this function will receive an instance of the map and then what it's going to do is it's going to access the map, map ref.current and assign it to the map and we will also pass in our dependency array right here. So if I save this I can come down and say 
onload, what you're going to do is call this onload function that we defined here via the um, onload callback, and then we're good to go. So we're up and running, we've got the map rendering out, we've loaded the script properly, we've set up our API key. Uh, next step is we're going to go style it using um, an ID, a map ID. So by default, you get these colors on your, on your map and they look great, but what if you want dark mode and you want your map um, dark or if you want it um, grayscale? So there are ways to pass in styles to your map, like a, a big JSON of, of options for styling. There's actually an easier way and it's to define your styles inside of the Google Maps platform um, where we were setting up our API keys and our credentials and things like that. So if you click down in map styles, you'll see I already have two that I set up, sort of like a, a dark, I just called it Lee for lack of a better name, a dark version of a map, a light version of a map. Here you can click create style. They give you a few starting points to go off of, a uh, dark mode, a night, a classic. They also give you some industry optimized styles uh, that show or hide different amounts of detail. So if you're, if you're doing logistics, you don't need the same sort of um, what stores are side by side, things like that. You can also import, if you've got your, your map styling options elsewhere, you can paste them in here and use that as a starting point. What we're going to do is we're just going to, maybe for this demo, I'll show uh, a night one. And that gives us this map here, and we can say open in style editor. And this allows us to tweak everything. So for example, if we wanted to change the color of water, we could come down here, water, geometry, we could click this color, and instead of uh, black like it is here, maybe we want our, our water like this nice orange. It's maybe not the most appealing to swim in, but let's go with that. So you can sort of make the map look exactly like you, like you want, changing transportation, like roads and things like that, um, changing what color parks are. You could change sort of all of your geometry default colors here. Um, you get it exactly how you want it to look, and then you save it. And saving it for the first time publishes these changes. So we could call this orange water. Save that. Now we've got sort of three map styles to work with. Once you've got that set up, you can hop over to map management. And this is where you create a map ID. And a map ID, if we click into this, it's something we give a name to. So we could call this... Uh, React Maps Crash Course. We can pick what we're building this for, so we're doing it on JavaScript, and we can pick if we want a raster-based map or a vector-based map. Let's go with vector, and we'll save this. And once we've created our, our map ID, we can then choose which style we want to go with. So I'm gonna pick the one I created earlier called Darkly. That shows what our map will look like. We can save it. And what this gives us is a map ID. So we can come and copy that map ID, go back into our code, and specifically where we set up our map options, what we'll do is we'll just add a new one. So we'll say map ID is equal to this string. And this one I am just going to hard code here. It's not something secretive, so we can just leave it in our code sort of exposed, that's fine. So we're gonna save that. And if we go back then and look at what our map is rendering like. Okay, so the, the colors have shown up. I just waited about 30 seconds or something like that. So now I have this nice dark mode map where I've customized the, the color of the water here. And uh, we have a nice dark mode theme to work with. So that's how you can customize the look and feel of your map by setting up styles and creating a map ID inside of the Google Maps platform. The next thing we're going to work on is getting the places search showing up here so that we can find where our office is and put that office as a marker on the map. We're going to be adding a Google places search box over here on the left, right under the commute uh, H1 tag. And that will allow the user to search for their office and place that as a marker on the map. So I've already imported a places component that's sort of an empty placeholder that we'll fill out right now. But we're going to use that component right here in controls. We'll do places like this. 
And you can see that it's got a TypeScript error because it's expecting to receive a, a function called set office. So we need to pass in set office. And what this is going to do is basically uh, update some state. So state to basically store the latitude and longitude of the office that they selected. So why don't we go set up that state first? So we'll say const office and set office is equal to use state just like that. And we'll give it a type hint of what it should expect to receive. And that will be a latitude longitude literal, just like we've used before. So if we come down, what we're going to be doing is passing in um, a function just like that. And what it's going to receive is a, a position or a location. So we'll say position. And then this position is going to call this set office function. So set office given a position. And so why didn't I just pass in this exact set office function here? Because I don't just want to update state. What I want to also do is move the map to that location. So we can do that by accessing our map ref, just like that. And because this map ref, it, it, it may be missing because at the beginning it's not initialized. So if you just do dot current um, and then pan two, which is the function, you can see that it starts to add some question marks here because it, it might not be um, available. So that's good. It added it in automatically. And where we want to pan to is this position. So if I just save this, basically we're calling the places component OK. It's not really showing up yet, just this word places showed up. So we have to go into places and implement this actual code. So rather than just returning a div, we need to show a combo box which allows a user to search through Google Places. You can see that I already set up the type here of this set office function that's going to um, receive a position, a latitude, longitude, literal. Um, good, so we're good to go. We've already passed in that function. Now it's time to use it. So the package I like working with for using Google Places is this use places autocomplete, which gives you a hook, uh, use places autocomplete, and it returns you a whole bunch of values that you can then use to, to display and control uh, how Google Places works. There are other um, React packages that, that do more of this for you, but it sort of takes away some of the flexibility you have with this package. So what we're going to do is um, we'll, we'll extract some values out from this object, but we're going to start by just calling use places autocomplete. And what we need to pass in, nothing. We're good to go. And we don't have to set up um, loading the script or anything like that, because remember, we already did that here at the beginning when we were just starting out with the maps and we told it we want to use the places library which is key because that's required to work with uh, places autocomplete. So what this is going to give us back is a boolean called ready. Is the script ready to be used? In our case it always should be because we've checked this is loaded here but it's good to keep this check just in place. So we're going to get the value that the users entered into an input box we're going to also get a function set value to, to change this every time they, they type a letter. We're going to get the suggestions themselves, but this is actually broken out into two things. Uh, the status of whether we actually received some suggestions okay or not, and the actual data of those suggestions themselves. Finally, one other function we're going to extract from this object is something called clear suggestions sort of whenever they've selected one, we can remove the list from the screen um, of the suggestions we're showing to our user. So if we save this, a lot of values that we're extracting, but we're going to use them right now. So what I'm working with for my actual combo box is this package called reach combo box. And what we start out with on the outside is this combo box itself. So we'll do combo box. And to that, we're going to have to pass an onSelect function. Let's not fill it in yet. We'll come back to this in a second. But inside of the combo box, what we have to do is the input itself, where the user types into. So we'll use the combo box input, just like that. Let's convert it into a component. 
and we need to pass it a few different props. So the first prop we have to pass is the value that the user has typed in. Next is anytime they, they change that value, we have to listen for that event. So on change, that gives us an event. And then with this event, what we can do is call set value, which would be the E dot target, target being the input itself, dot the value that they've typed into this. So by default, we're going to disable this if it's not ready to be used. And I'm just going to give it a class name that I've set up um, called combo box input, combo in a box, combo box input. Um, what's inside of this is just setting some width and padding of this so that it takes up the space of the container that it's in. So I'm gonna hit save. Let's come back and view here. We have it showing up. The user may not know what they're expected to type in here. So why don't we come back here and we'll put a placeholder. So the placeholder, we're just gonna say search and address. Um, or search, you could say office address to be a little bit more clear right here. So if we were to type searching, so if we would search for like the Google uh, Kitchener office, which is uh, somewhere up in here, uh, we may be getting suggestions back, but we haven't shown them yet anywhere on the screen. If we were to come in and just do console.log um, status and data, and then pop open this console here, and you can see here, we're actually getting some results back and the status is okay. So it's actually working correctly, but we just need to display them to the user. So if we come back here, right below, we're going to put the combo box popover just like that. And inside of the combo box popover, we have the list of suggestions. So combo box list, just like that. And inside of the combo box list, first what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if the status is okay. So it's just capital letters okay. That's Google telling you that uh, you've been able to load the places correctly and you've got some suggestions to work with. So if that's true, what we're going to do is we're going to map over the results. So data.map. And what it gives us are basically two things we want to extract. The first is the place ID. We can use that as a key for all of the options we're going to show in this list. And the second thing we want is the description of the place itself. So this is going to render out a combo box option just like that. And we're going to do this. So it's giving us an error and it's saying that you need to have, um, what are we missing here? An option that is suggested, no overload matches. So we're missing a value. We're also missing a key because we're iterating over this. So we'll pass in, pass in the key of the place ID and we'll give it the value of the description. And hopefully if we do that, TypeScript will correct itself and we can come check if it's displaying things correctly. Cool, and it is even sort of, it still had that data in state. So now it's rendering correctly. Here's where that Google office is I wanted to show on the map. But remember, we haven't finished this on select function yet. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to say const handle select. And this is gonna be the function that we call when they select it. So it needs to be asynchronous because we're going to be working with promises inside of it. And this function is gonna receive a value that's a string. So whatever, um, basically it would be this whole string here, Google, Bright Haupt Street, Kitchener, Ontario, Canada. So inside of this, what do we first wanna do? Let's first just update the value to be what the user has selected. So this receives two things, the string itself, val, and should fetch data, we're gonna say false, because we're, we're, we're not asking it to go and load more data, we've chosen a selection. So once that's done, we can clear out the suggestions, because I think once you select it, we shouldn't keep showing the list of suggestions to our user. And after that, what we need to do is call a couple of functions imported from use places autocomplete 
to convert from this address string into coordinates. So the first one we're going to do is going to give us some results and we are going to await a get geocode. So geocode takes in um, an object that has an address of this val here. So basically whatever text is showing up here. And what that will give us back are a bunch of results that can then be, um, we can extract the latitude and longitude from those results. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say const lat and lng is a weight and we'll call a function called get lat long. And what we need to do here is pass in a single result. So the single result will be oops, results zero. So whatever the first result is, we'll pass that in. So once we have that, we have the latitude and longitude of whatever place they've selected. So we can then call our set office function. So set office, it wants to receive a lat long literal. So we'll pass in lat lng, just like that. Cool, so TypeScript is corrected. We need to pass the handle select down to on select here. And then if we were to choose this, uh, you can see it panned to that location. So it's working correctly because when we called set office, that was the prop, the function passed in. And what this did was it set that position into state, into this office uh, state but it also panned the map to that position. So we saw it pan the map, which was the reason why we had the reference. But why don't we actually just show the marker on the map right now? So what we're going to do is inside of this Google map, we will say if there is an office, so and and, we will show the marker. So I've imported already a marker component marker just like this and so on its own it gives you an error what it's expecting to receive is basically hey where do you want to show this marker on the screen so for that we'll give it a position just like that and we can pass in our office because our office is a latitude longitude literal which is what the position expects to receive just like that so if I were to save this come back here scroll up we are now viewing um, Kitchener with a marker on the map. So things are working as expected. Now, one thing I wanted to do is I just wanted to update um, the marker from showing the default red one to a little, like let's differentiate it a bit because I'm going to be showing other markers later and I wanna differentiate my office from um, the different houses that I could potentially buy and then commute to this location. So what I can do here is I can just go to the marker and I can say icon and you can pass in any URL. And I've loaded one already that's uh, a beach flag. So if I were to come back here, we have the beach flag showing up just like that. Awesome. So at this point, what we wanna do is we wanna start to show some concentric circles around where the office is to sort of start to indicate where are the commutable distances. So the whole point of this map is to basically see, well, if I work here, where can I buy a house and have it be some sort of sane commutable distance to get to work? Because if I'm going to work, uh, the average American works 260 days a year, twice a day you're commuting there and back. The further away you are from your office, uh, the harder it is to get to and the more gas you have to spend and the longer you spend time in your car. So we're going to draw some circles around here that sort of show like commutable, semi-commutable, eh, it's pretty far away. And we'll start with uh, about 15 kilometers distance and then 30 and then 45 kilometers. So for that what we're going to do is basically inside of this like, I guess it's sort of like an if statement here, like if an office then render this out. Uh, you could do this with a ternary as well, but I like this sort of shortcut approach. What we're going to do is we're going to start by putting um, this fragment around it so that we can place additional things inside. And we're going to be working with a component called a circle. 
So circle is something I had already imported up here at the top. And to a circle, what you do is first you tell it where it to position itself. You don't use position though, you use center. So I'm going to use the same office location as the center. And we need to tell it the radius as well. So radius. And you do this in meters. So 15, if I want kilometers, um, a kilometer is a thousand meters. So we add three zeros to that. So if we were to come back here, you can see this dark circle. It's drawn around this location. You can then go and apply some different colors and styles to it, which is all of this setup that I had done below. Um, basically, I'm setting the stroke uh, opacity, how, th how thick it is, what the color should be. So for the close one, I've got close options, middle options, and far options. So what we're going to do is we're going to say options, and we're going to pass close options. So now I have a green. This is like, yes, you can commute from here. Next one, if I just copy this, we change it to 30 kilometers, and we use the middle options. That's like, you could maybe commute from there, but you're starting to get far, pretty far away from your office. And then the next one will be the 45, and that's starting to get pretty far away. So we'll use the far options, which draws that bigger red circle around it. So if we zoom out on the map, sort of like the further away you get from the office, the more difficult it will be to commute there. Um, that's that. Now what we want to do is start to show the houses on the map. So we can basically choose one and it will show us how do you get from that house to your office and how far away is it. So remember, I talked at the beginning for a sec. I've got this function called generate houses. Given a position, let's say where the office is, for example, um, or where the center of the map is, maybe that's another approach. Uh, just generate a hundred houses, sort of randomizing their latitude and longitude so it sort of displays on the map. You'll see it in a second. We're going to call this function generate houses. Up here at the top, we'll, we'll just do it below here. So we'll say houses is equal to use memo. And uh, use memo will be a function. And for this, we will have a dependency. We'll say this center value is our dependency. So that inside of here, what we can do is we can say generate houses for this center location. So anytime the center location changes, that will regenerate houses and place those houses inside of this array here. And with this setup, we can come down to our map again, and maybe below the office location, we will just uh, render out the houses. So we'll map them out for each house. What we want to do is display a marker, and that marker will have a position. So that would be the house position. And we need to give it a key because we're iterating. So for key, what you could possibly use is just house dot maybe it's latitude. Hopefully we don't have two houses with the exact same latitude. Um, if you were really worried, you could combine latitude and longitude together to make it a little bit more random. And I think that's all we need to get these houses showing up on the map. Maybe I have an error actually. No, it doesn't look like it. Let me just re reload the screen. Let me choose an office, so Kitchener. Uh, Google, actually, no, Google Kitchener, sorry. Perfect. So when I choose my location on the map, uh, that triggers it to go and find the houses, and then I'm showing those houses on the screen. And you can see they're sort of randomized out. We have a few in the green area, and you've got some further and further away. So with 100 houses, it's it's doable, but you're starting to get, like, it's, I think it's calling for clustering. Basically, in this region, there's, there's four, in this region, there's two, etc. So we're gonna come and we're going to use the marker clusterer component from Google um, to basically cluster these locations together. So popping over to the code, clustering is extremely easy to get set up. What we're going to do is use a component called the marker clusterer. And as a child to this component, you have to pass a function 
that when called will receive an instance of the cluster itself. And as a return value of this arrow function, we want to basically return all of the houses to render out. So we'll just cut and paste that inside of this function. We'll clean up this, these brackets here. And the only other thing we need to do is pass this instance of the clusterer to the marker itself. So there's a clusterer prop, and then we pass the clusterer instance. And if we come back, we have our houses being clustered together in groups. So Google, uh, the, the controls and clustering that they have set up will automatically um, put them in the right groups at the right zoom level. And as you click into one, it will sort of reveal the next zoom level down. So sometimes it will then show individual houses. Sometimes it will just show uh, smaller groups of clusters that you could then click into and eventually you'll get down to the actual houses themselves. So that's in what, one minute we were able to add marker clustering to our map. Next, we wanna add the ability to click on one of the houses. So if I zoom in in the clustering and click one of these markers, I want it to draw directions from whatever marker I clicked on to my office. And that will then show us uh, or give us the information to know how far will it take to commute to this office. So what we're going to do is add an on-click event handler here, which will call an arrow function. And this arrow function is going to call something called fetch directions. We haven't created that yet. That's what we're going to do right now. And to this function, we're going to pass the house, which if you remember is just the latitude and longitude literal. So let's go to find this fetch directions function. So we'll come up here and we'll say const fetch directions, and that is equal to, it's going to receive a position, which is a lat long literal. And then in the body here is where we're going to do the work to actually call the direction service to, to be able to um, calculate the directions from basically the position to the office. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to say if there's no office, we are going to just return. Because in order to get directions, we need both the office and the position of the house. So why don't we actually call this explicitly house? So with that done, what we can do is create an instance of the direction service from, from Google. So we'll say the service is equal to a new instance of Google dot maps dot directions service. And then we can use this service to basically find us the directions between two routes. So we call service.root, and then what it wants to receive are basically, what is the origin? So we'll say it's from the house. And what is the destination? We'll say it's to the office. So we're going from the house we're thinking of buying to the office. And how are we going to get there? What is the travel mode? Because it could be car, bike, walking. We'll say that the travel mode is google.maps.travelmode.driving. That's how we're going to get there. So what we do is we pass in another function here that's going to receive the result and the status, just like that. So inside of here, we're going to put a quick if statement that says if the status is triple equals to OK, and there's some results for these directions, then what we can do is basically take these results, oops, result, and let's put them into some state. So we don't have any state set up yet to store the directions. So why don't we come up here to the top and we'll say const directions set directions is going to be use state like that. And for a type hint, we'll pass in the directions result like that. So now we can come back here and we can say set directions and we'll pass in the result like that. So just to go over this again, we create a new instance of the direction service and then we route it from the house that the user clicked on to the office via driving and then the result we place inside of state. And once we have that inside of state, it's now time to show these directions on the map. So what we can do is we can come back down inside of the map and we can check if there's directions, 
then render out the directions renderer, which is another component that we're bringing in from the React Google Maps slash API package. So it knows how to receive these directions results and render them out. So what we do is we pass in the directions here as directions, and then we can pass some options. So if we just save it like this, it should work. Let me search for uh, Google Kitchener again. And then we'll just choose one of the houses and it renders out directions. It's actually looking pretty good. We don't really need to change anything. But if we wanted to, we could come in and we could pass some options like this. And the types of options you might um, pass in are like how to draw the line that's rendering out sort of the directions on the road. So we could say that we want to have a Z index of 50 so that it comes above any of the circles that we've rendered out on the screen already. And then we can give a stroke color of, uh, there's this color 19762 is this nice blue. And then we'll give it how thick the line should be. So a stroke weight of five. So if I just save that, come back, I think I have to get the directions again. So let's go to this one this time. And now you can see it, it looks similar, but because of the Z index, it popped it on top of the concentric circles that I'm rendering out. So that's how you can get the directions and then use the directions renderer to, to draw the route from your origin to your destination. So next what we want to do is basically just display some information about the directions to from the uh, from the house to the office and particularly like how long it will take to get there and what if you did this 260 times a year twice a day how much time would you be spending in your car how much money would you be spending on gas so we're working inside of these controls this div over here on the left and right below where we put the places I'm actually going to start off taking a step back what if the user arrives here for the first time uh, what are they supposed to do so we're going to give them some directions where we just say if there's not an office then render out a P that says enter the address of your office just like that cool so now they know what to do so we'll put in Google Kitchener as the address that will show all of the houses on the map and we'll choose one of them so that it renders out the directions to get from there to the office so now we want to show information about the distance of that route so right below here we're going to be working with a distance component that I've imported so we'll touch on all of this in a second for now we're just gonna call it we're gonna say if there are directions then show the distance component and it wants to receive um, one leg of the journey basically so if we look at the directions in general there's often multiple routes you could take to get from the origin to the destination so we want to first access let's just say the first route so whatever the default one is and then specifically uh, the first leg of that route so we'll say legs zero just like that so now we come over here to distance and we could just render out a console.log of the leg to see what sort of information it gives to us. So if I go into the console, here's the leg, and we get a bunch of information like the start location, the end location. We get distance and duration. So where I chose on the map, the duration is 33 minutes, which is this many seconds. And the distance is 41.8 kilometers, which is this many meters. So we're going to be working with this text and value here to basically calculate some things about how long you'll spend in a car each year. So for these calculations, I've set up some constants. How many times does someone typically commute per year? According to Google, it's 260 times times two, so there and back. And I put in some calculations about basically the fuel efficiency of a car. So in Canada, we often use the number of liters to drive 100 kilometers as like a standard fuel efficiency calculation. So I said here, uh, you use 10 liters of gas to drive 100 kilometers. 
But if I want to know how many liters to drive one kilometer, I can just divide it by 100. How much does gas cost? It's about $1.50 per liter right now. So if we multiply these two together, that tells us basically how much it's going to cost to drive one kilometer. That's important because then we can use these calculations here to figure out how much it's going to cost us. So seconds per day, this is just there's 60 seconds in a minute, um, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day. So this tells us how many seconds per day. Because remember, Google is telling us this in seconds, so that's why I needed this constant setup. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just put an if statement here, um, mostly for the purposes of TypeScript, otherwise it's going to give us an error because there's some optional values. So we'll say if there's not a distance on this leg, or if there's not a duration, duration, we're going to just return null. So if you don't have those, just don't bother rendering anything. Next, what we're going to do is figure out how many days a year would we be driving if we commuted 260 times times two um, there and back from the, from the home we chose to the office. So for this, we'll say days is equal to math.floor to just round down to the nearest day, basically. So we start off with how many commutes per year are there times the leg.duration.value divided by, because it gives us in seconds, we divide by seconds per day. So if we save this and we just render out the days here, what it's telling us is if we wanted to buy this house, commute to this office, and we did it every day, twice a, twice a day for 260 times a year, we'd spend 11 days inside of a car. It's quite a bit of time to spend inside of a car. And we can actually then calculate what would the cost be if we were to do that. So we'll say cost is equal to, let's also do math.floor to just round down to the nearest integer. So what we'll do is we'll say the leg distance value divided by a thousand because they give it to us in meters, we want to convert to kilometers. And then we multiply by liter cost kilometer. And then we multiply that by how many times you commute per year. So commutes per year. This now gives us, oops, I gave it a cost. This gives us a cost. So it would cost $3,256 if you were to do this commute um, every day for a year or 260 times per year. So given these values, we can now display sort of a nice message to our user about what is the true cost of basically this commute? So we'll put it inside of a P tag and we'll say this home is, and I'm going to put this in a span to highlight it. So class name of highlight. So we can say leg.distance.text away from your office. So let's start with that. Let's see how it's looking. So this home is 41.8 kilometers away from your office. Perfect. And we can say that would take, and we can do another span. So span uh, with a class name of highlight. So now we can use our calculation. So we can say, um, So after that, if that's the distance, how long would it take each way? We can say that would take, and then we'll put another span here with a class name of highlight. And then we'll say leg.duration.text each direction. So if we save that, we now say this home is 41.8 kilometers away from your office. That would take 33 minutes each direction. So that's what each commute would take. But what if you were to do that 260 days times two commutes per year? Well, now you get to use these calculations that we came up with. So we'll put another P and I'm going to just copy this so I don't have to keep pasting it. So what we're going to say is that's here. And we can say days, days 
in your car each year at a cost of, and we'll paste this highlight again, so cost, just like that. So we come back and we see that's 11 days in your, in your car each year at a cost of 3,256. So maybe we wanna format this as dollars. What we can do is we can just put the dollar sign here and then we can come and if we wanna get commas showing up correctly, we can say new intl dot number format dot format the cost. So this is some in, um, internal number formatting built into JavaScript in the browser. So we're gonna format the cost for whatever location your user's located in. So it puts commas in the right place basically. So that's 11 days in your car each year at a cost of $3,256. So now you know sort of the true cost of if you were to buy a house and commute. So if you go into the green zone, it redoes the directions and now that's down to seven days and only uh, $1,200. And if we go really far out, like let's say we're gonna go further out of the red zone, way over here, now that's 21 days you're gonna spend in your car each year and over $6,000 if you were to live here and work here. So now you can figure out the true cost of that commute on a yearly basis. That's all I wanted to show in this video and we, we covered an awful lot. If we were to sort of review what we did, we started off just by rendering a map. We applied some custom, um, some customization via styles and the map ID to our map. We then worked on searching for our office. So we'll do Google Kitchener. And when we choose an office, we, we rendered out some circles of sort of 15 kilometers, 30 kilometers, 45 kilometers away. Sort of good commute, average commute, pretty bad commute. We rendered out the markers, then we cluster, clustered them, and we added an on-click event that would calculate the directions between the location you chose and your office. Then we used that directions object to render out some calculations of how much that would cost you if you were to do this on a yearly basis. Hope you enjoyed the video and how powerful working with Google Maps in React can be. Take care, bye.